Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to slipstream Windows 21 H2. So let's get started. Obviously the application we use to slipstream is called NT Lite. If you watched any of my tutorials before, you'll know that it's NT Lite I've always used. You can get that by going to https colon slash slash www.ntlite.com slash downloads and click on the download 64-bit button. Of course, we're also going to need a copy of Windows 10 and the simplest way to get a copy of Windows 10 is to use the Windows Media Creation Toolkit. That's at https colon slash slash www.microsoft.com slash en dash gb slash software dash download slash Windows 10 and clicking on the download tool now. So I've already got both these downloaded. These are in my downloads folder. So what I will actually do is I'll kick off the Media Creation Toolkit as it will take time to download the Windows 10 image that we require. So click yes when user account control kicks in. And while that's having a think about that, we will install NT Lite. Please install like any other Windows application. Just double click it, say yes to user account control when it kicks in. And read at your leisure, any licensing agreements and click accept if you choose to do so. Installing it to the default location is fine. Okay, now that's been done, I'm just going to click finish on that, jump back here. Again, I've read this end user license agreement before, so I'm just going to click accept. Okay, obviously when you run the Windows 10 setup tool, if you've seen this before, the Media Creation Toolkit, it'll ask you if you want to upgrade current PC. In this case I don't, I'm already running that. Or create new installation media from USB, DVD or ISO. Or rather create a USB DVD or ISO from another PC. So I'll do that, I'll just click next. Gives you the choice of language, version and architecture, or edition and architecture. Uh, 64-bit Windows 10 in English, United Kingdom is fine by me, but if you need to untick this, you can then change these on some occasions to 32-bit, both versions, or English United States as required. I'm just going to leave it ticked and click next. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use an ISO file, so I'm just going to select ISO rather than USB drive. And it asks me to choose which media to use, and I'm going to click next. It's asking me to save the image. I'll save this into my downloads folder just now, and just click save. Okay, that's been successfully created, so I can click finish here, and it will do a cleanup. And as you can see, I have a Windows.ISO in my downloads folder. Okay, to back up our drivers, what we need to do is we need to Open PowerShell as an admin. So right click your taskbar, select PowerShell as admin and click yes when user account control kicks in. Okay. So when that comes up, we want to use export dash Windows driver command for command lit. So export dash Windows driver space dash online, meaning the ones currently in use, space dash destination. And in my case, I'm saving them to a folder called drivers on my D drive. So you've just put the path to that, whether it's on your C code slash temp slash drivers or whatever. So I'm going to hit return and give that a moment and it'll back up my drivers. And just like that, my drivers should be backed up. And if I look at my decon slash drivers folder, there's a list of driver folders that have been backed up. So that looks like it's successful. So we can close this down. And what we want to do now is we want to run NT Lite. So click on our start bar, click on NT Lite and say yes when user account control kicks in. Interesting, this pop-up has never happened to me before. So limited non-commercial use it'll be because at the moment I'm not making any money on this. So I'll select that and click OK. So before we continue any further, we have to extract our Windows 10 image into a folder that we can edit. So if we followed the previous tutorial, our Windows 10 image was saved to our downloads folder. So what we can do is we can double click that and it will mount it. Just expand this a little bit for you. OK, and now we can click in here. And do Control A to select everything and Control C to copy and then click on our D drive. We will right click and do new folder and we'll call this 21H2 slip and hit return and hit return again to go into the folder. Now we can right click and paste and give that a moment to copy the Windows files across. Okay, now that that's been extracted, we can go back into NT Lite. We can click add up here and image directory. And then we can point that to our D drive and to 21H1 slip and click select folder. And as you can see, that's opened up. So in this case, we were working on 
Windows 10 Pro, so here it's here. This also works perfectly using the same steps for Windows 11, for those of you who are curious of that. And we simply double click Windows 10 Pro and it says convert the image to a standard WIM format. Current image will be replaced after conversion back up manually before this step. So the answer to that is yes. A ESD is a compressed version of a WIM. WIMs are editable, ESDs generally aren't, so it's going to have to convert that over. So if we click OK, and we'll give that a while to actually extract. Obviously, if you're using the education version of Windows 10 or the home version of Windows 10, then you would select the version that you require. Okay, so that's complete. And we have a do not show this again warning pop up. So click on do not show this in the future and click OK. I believe these are not in the professional version of this, only in the free version. So it's now going to try and unpack that image that it's just loaded up. OK, and that's our image ready and imported so that we can continue using it and Slipstream will be required into it. With your image open, click on updates on the left hand side. Click add and latest online updates. As you can see, it's Windows 10 21H1 X64. It's selected four updates, but there's one that I can select for .NET. Ah, I see. Okay, so that's fine. There's one that's a preview, so you don't actually require that. So just download the four that requests and click in queue. You can't actually click download at that point unless you've got the paid for version of NT Lite. We also then need to click on drivers. Then we click add and direct to containing drivers, add. And then point that to our D drive and the drivers folder that we exported in an earlier tutorial. Not sure why that shows us the wrong architecture, but okay, fair enough. If we all have to reinstall one driver at the end of the day, that's not really a bad thing. So click OK. And that is pretty much it. Unless you want to change some other additional settings, you can literally just drop down to apply. Now, I always save the image and trim additions. I'm OK with it being a standard editable WIM. I always remove non-essential additions. That basically means Windows PE. I don't require it. And I also create an ISO. So when I do this, it'll ask me where to save it. And for the sake of this tutorial, I shall put it in my downloads folder. So I'll just click save in there. It's asking me to give it a name. So this would be March-21H2. And click OK. And with all those settings selected, click process in the top corner. It complains that I've got Windows Defender detected. I am intending and in doing a virtual machine specifically for this slipstreaming in a future tutorial. But for the time being, we can ignore that and click do not show this in the future and select yes. It wants us to close it down, so just close that down. Start applying all pending changes. Click do not show this in the future and click yes. And what it should do is it should download the updates and then tell us it's downloaded them with a pop-up that's only put in there on the free version to nag you to upgrade. And then it should continue with the rest of the objects that it has to do. So we'll give that a moment. There we go. Completed downloads. This message is non-existent when fully licensed action is instead fully automated. So again, deliberate nag to delay you. Click OK. And I'll continue with the next task. Again, another needless delay thrown in to nag you to upgrading. So just click OK on this and wait for the next step to continue. Okay, and that is now complete. What we should now have is we should now have a March 21H2 ISO on our downloads folder. Rather, sorry, we should have an NT Lite.ISO in our downloads folder and there it's there. So you can see that it's obviously different from the previous version. It started with a 4.5 gig image, it's now a 6.8 gig image. So we've added around 2.5 gig of patches and drivers. If you like this video, give it a like. If you just like this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.